Hello there, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host Amy from Venture. welcome to another Fountain Pen review. This time we are going to have a good look at one of the biggest fountain pens in my entire fountain pen collection, the Danny Trio Genkai. I want to ask you a very, very serious question. Do you think size matters when it comes to fountain pens or not? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, what we have here today for review, it is the biggest fountain pen in my personal fountain pen collection. A very, very impressive fountain pen, which you've been asking for this review for quite some time. In true pen venture style, I'm gonna show you the fountain pen, I'm gonna show some details regarding the company, I'm gonna show you the fountain pen in details, the Rushi coating, everything, nib, fountain pen. Then we will have a side-by-side -side size comparison, writing sample, beautiful nib, and in the end, I'm gonna show some of my personal opinions, the company, Danny Trio. I know that's a more elusive pen company because you haven't seen it being uh, brought into light so often in these days but anyway they are based in california established around 1974 if i'm not mistaken and uh, it's sort of a mixed style of creating fountain pens made from ebonite and then shipping them to japan in order to be urushi coated some are wild some are exotic some are just so far in regards of budget that I can only dream of them. Uh, let's get into, first of all, the customer experience, how it's presented. It comes in this box and you may mistaken this for something very, very simple, but what's inside, it's far, far from being simple. Let's slide this right here and you will find a wooden box. Let's lift up this lid and inside you will find a pen sleeve kimono call it whatever you like i don't know if this is provided by danny trio or it's from urushipen.com this is the website that i usually get my danny trios and a sort of device which is an eyedropper made out of glass be very careful this is what you use in order to fill this fountain pen with ink inside you will find this gorgeous batoon of a fountain pen it's the size of a baseball bat it's so big shape wise the Danny Trio it's a cylindrical fountain pen flat at ends with the cap diameter being a little bit bigger than the barrel very very minimalistic design which is just like a breath of fresh air it is not complicated at all you can easy follow it with your eyesight it is one of those fountain pens that I personally can say that I've craved for because I've seen some videos with such models and uh, they were made by Stephen Brown and also from David Thickbooth and they presented their Genkais and I said one day I'm gonna get mine because it looks so so far apart from anything else at that time that I've seen and to be honest in person it is a very very impressive fountain pen I know it looks simple if you have one of this in your hands you will understand that the simplicity is just like an iceberg you don't see how much interesting is this fountain pen you only see the thing that's uh, above the water level let's showcase some of the design features of this fountain pen let's start with the finial which is flat like I told you and right here on the edges we can see some color variation we have this beautiful beautiful yellow color by now i think you already know what's urushi but for those that are watching right now and are not accustomed to the term urushi urushi is actually the sap of the lacquer tree which is a sort of art form to coat different objects and this layers on this fountain pens are stunning if you look at them you can actually see that there is a lot of detail underneath and this finish is built by applying multiple layers of different colors in order to get different effects this technique is called tame nuri which is actually described as being like a viewer which is watching a pond 
and you see that there is different depths and right at the edge you will see the, the bottom of the pond and in the middle you will see a very very dark color. Take a quick look on this fountain pen. There are parts which are visible. You can see the yellow underneath the, the primary color of the Urushi coating and in the middle you can see that the fountain pen is a little bit more darker. Danny Trio calls this Tamenuri on yellow. Yellow underneath and the Urushi coating over this yellow. Let's move further with the cap. The cap is pretty much not changing its diameter at all. Continuing down, we have no trim elements, no clip, no rings, nothing whatsoever. Not having trim elements, it's actually quite hard to identify how many turns of the cap you need to use in order to uncap the fountain pan, but I think are just like two turns of the cap. And I'm going to show you the nib because this nib is one of the most interesting nibs that you can have on a Danny Trio. This is the famous 18 karat gold 750 nib. In my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful nibs along with the Namiki number no. 50 nib on the Emperor that I personally own. This is a size 8 gold nib made by Bok with a very streamlined ebonite feeder which is just simply stunning. A huge nib with a beautiful motif, two tones. We have silver in the middle. We have these two pillars on either tines. Then we have right here stamped Danny Trio and the nib size. These fountain pens are available, I believe, in a number of sizes, fine, and medium, broad, and stub. And I got a very, very stunning stub nib on my Genkai. The stub is a little bit more rare, if I'm not mistaken, but Jason from Rushipan.com made sure that I got a stub and I think it goes so well. A big nib, big fountain pen and the size being a stub. Both the nib and the feeder are friction fitted inside a color and the color is screwed in the section, making it very, very easy to change this nib and also very, very practical the section is very simple, it's sort of hourglass but it has the thinnest point right here around 10 millimeters at the grip and right here we have this flaring out that's going to not let your fingers to slip forward. Then the section starts to pick up in girth and we have the cap threads right here. Those are made in ebonite, they are not coated in urushi. The, the, the threads are a little bit sharp and not too much but it is very very noticeable. Then we have a step up right here, another key area that's displaying the color variation in between the yellow and the other Urushi coating which is on top of the yellow. The barrel continues down without changing any diameter and we have this beautiful beautiful coating. Being an area which has a lot of length we can easily identify the technique and also the tools used in order to obtain this beautiful urushi coating because you can see the brush strokes and this is a gorgeous gorgeous uh, visual effect because you know that a hand a human hand of a craftsmanship in Japan lay down this urushi coating on your fountain pen also something unique about urushi you need to understand that the the finish will evolve in time will change its appearance its color and it's normal and in time you will see that it's going to be a little bit more darker maybe a different color maybe a lighter color i don't know all of the elements like the outside sun uh direct sunlight uh sweaty hands uh, other elements will in fact decide how your fountain pen will Age. Playing with the fountain pen in sunlight, you can actually spot the line that divides the barrel from the shut off valve of the filling system. The Danny Trio Genkai is a eyedropper fountain pen, meaning that there is clear space in the barrel of the fountain pen and you need to unscrew the section. And I'm going to show you this on my other Danny Trio Genkai. The short Genkai is not inked, so I can demonstrate how you would need to fill up your. Genkai, your big Genkai. You would unscrew the section like this and we have an o-ring right here which is going to keep your ink from getting on your fingers and right here we have the barrel and you would use the um, that small contraption that's provided with the fountain pen, the eyedropper, to take ink from a bottle of ink and to put it 
in the barrel. The shadow valve is actually a feature of this filling system, which allows you to control the ink flow. You can make the fountain pen a little bit more wet or a little bit more dry. And actually you can close the entire flow of ink from the barrel down to the feeder. If you close it like so completely right here, you will have the signature of the person who applied the Urushi coating on your fountain pen. And I do own two Genkais, like I showed you, my short Genkai and the large Genkai. Take a look right here. We have the same signature. So it's incredible to know that both fountain pens are made by the same person. And I, I, I love this, I love this. And I think in regards of details, this is what I have for you. A Genkai, it's a very, very simple shape, a very simple fountain pen, yet elegant, beautiful, oversized, quite oversized. And uh, let's get into the side-by-side -side size comparison. But till then, I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for this fountain pen. This is a very, very entry-level color that you can have on a Genkai. And the pricing for such a fountain pen and other entry-level colors is around $2,400. And if you want to go above and beyond what this fountain pen is, well, for the very, very ornate level Genkai, you will have to pull out of your pocket and your account around $22,000. Let's go into the side-by-side -side size comparison because this is a big fountain pen. I don't know what to make of it, but this fountain pen barely fits this tray and I've used it for a lot of fountain pens and every single one of them fit. But this one is just at the limit. So here we have the Denitro Genkai next to a Visconti Homo Sapiens, a short Genkai, a Namiki Emperor, Tatcha, Miyabi, Winter's Breath, the Empress with the King of Panneb and Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Nuda. Now let's have a look uncapped because it's a big fountain pen even when it's uncapped. Even in this scenario, the Denitro Genkai is going to far exceed the length of a Visconti Homo Sapiens. It is bigger than a short Genkai. It is a lot taller than a Miyabi Winter's Breath Empress, Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Nuda. It is only conquered by the Emperor because of the length of the size 50 Namiki nib. So both sections are at the same level, but the nib on the Namiki Emperor being so large, it is going to exceed like, I believe, half a centimeter more. Kept like this, the Denitro Genkai is measuring 174 millimeters, unkept like this in writing position is going to measure 152 millimeters. The total weight of the fountain pen inked and uncapped is 33 grams and capped like this is 50 grams. Wingardian Levios. Sorry. Now it is time for the writing sample. And uh, just like a tribute, I've inked up this fountain pen with SBRE Brown. And that ink is a very, very special one. And it matches this beautiful, beautiful Taminori, which is yellow, brownish. And I think both of them go so well together. Pan, Denitrio, Genkai. And we have the ink, S, B, R, E, brown and we have the nib 18 carat gold and it's an s from stop this is how it's marked i haven't opened up the shadow valve the japanese shadow valve of the system and i'm going to show you the difference in between opened and closed so we have paper TRP, Tomoe River Paper, 52 GSM. And now the wetness test. So I'm gonna show you two different wetness samples. One pass, the valve is closed. This is the sort of wetness that you can expect. Double pass. And I would put it to be a medium wet nib, but nothing like overly, overly wet. Now let's open up 
the shadow valve completely and to show you that we do have an increase in regards of the ink flow. This is one pass and it is slightly, slightly more, but you would need to give it a lot more time in order for that ink to come down. On double strokes, you can see, so this is closed and this is open and it regards off the shadow valve. A stub nib, you know by now what it is. It does very, very thin lines like this and a little bit broader like this. And it is ground to be a stub. It is a little bit more crispy. And we have normal figure of eight. And uh, you can actually spot the line variation in between the horizontal and the vertical strokes. Now with some flex and I wouldn't advise you to push this nib but it is soft so we do have a little bit of give and we have more ink coming out and you can clearly see that is a broader line. Now let's use the famous sentence, let's check to see how it's behaving. The weak brown Fox jumps over the lazy dog. Beautiful fountain pen, beautiful writing nib, a little bit of feedback, crispy, so you need to be a little bit more careful if you just rotate the fountain pen. It's going to show that a little bit crispier than your cursive stub, but I don't have anything against that. I do own about a hundred fountain pens, so I need to have a little bit more variation and not to have every single nib to write the same. So I do love that this fountain pen has a little bit of personality, how it's writing, the nib is a little bit more crispy. Now let's get to my personal opinions regarding this monster of a fountain pen, because we do have a lot of things to touch in this format. If you only give me a moment to, ah, whatever, it's going to roll off the desk. And uh, you need to be very, very careful with such a fountain pen if it's going to roll from the desk. It's a big fountain pen, has a little bit of weight and it can drop and can be damaged. Now, we have a, a, a very, very rough surface tiles on the floor and uh, if you drop this Urushi fountain pen, I think it's going to chip. Point number two on the list. This thing is not going to be so, so, let's say, uh, easy to carry. If you consider carrying this fountain pen with you outside, you have to understand that's a little bit more tricky. You need to have certain cases. I do recommend pen rolls. Those are a little bit more easy and comfortable for fountain pens like the toucher rolls. And this is what I personally use to carry uh, such fountain pens. It's like a roll that you can put your fountain pens and you would close it like so. And it is a little bit more easy to carry such a fountain pen with you. Uh, although you're gonna look like one of those chefs that's going to display his knives. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna put this away. Carrying this fountain pen, it's not that easy. Take that in consideration if you're a practical person, if you use such a fountain pen on the go, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. Imagine having this fountain pen with you in a meeting. You need to understand that you will have some people looking funny at you. Yeah, what is this guy is going to bring? What is that? What is that a weapon is that a batoon is that a what is that that is the level of looks that you can expect when you have such a fountain pen among people that are not accustomed to seeing fountain pens and uh, this can be beneficial if you want to draw some more attention to you it's a fountain pen that's going to cost you around two thousand four hundred dollars it's an expensive fountain pen but for that you actually get a simple shape with a single color with a beautiful nib, very big size and all of that. The finishes are very, very nice. Are they like Namiki grade? 
Hi, like Nakaya. Hi, mm, I wouldn't say so. But anyway, you're getting very, very nice Japanese genuine Urushi. How much you value this to finish? This simple shape, the simple design, it's only up to you. If you want to pay this price, I'm gonna leave it only to you. Then it will has some very, very unique shapes for fountain pens, which are sort of a fusion in between American and Japanese styles. And this is sort of the reason why do I like and collect Denitrio fountain pens, because there isn't anything else that can be in that uh, shape and also in so many finishes. So this is why I like to collect Denitrio fountain pens. It's a relative comfortable fountain pen for its size. It's not going to be postable, and I don't know why you would need to post a fountain pen which is measuring around 152 millimeters in regards of the length. It is a very, very balanced weight. It is evenly distributed. It's made out of ebonite. This makes it a little bit more easy to wield and to use. It doesn't have so much weight, although the size of it is big. The size 8 gold nib fits very, very well. I couldn't imagine such a fountain pen with a size 6 nib on it. The grip section, it has a diameter which I consider to be very, very manageable for any hands, and I do have small hands. I do own a number of Danny Trio fountain pens, and I've seen that in time with use that O-ring, it's going to lose its ability to keep the ink uh, into the barrel, and sometimes some ink will find its way on your fingers, getting your fingers dirty or inky and uh, pretty much that's it if you are interested to acquire such a fountain pen i'm gonna leave you the link down below where i had mine from rushipen.com and you can enter there and search the one that you will like in the finish that you like and if you have any other questions regarding the Genkai, let me know in the comment section down below. I will be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Uh, also, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find the details for our website, PenVenture, our social media accounts, email, phone number, anything and everything that you may need in order to get in contact with me. If you are looking for a next writing instrument, have it from PenVenture, I will be more than happy to help you. If you want to support the growth of the PenVenture YouTube channel, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. If you're not subscribed now, just go there, click subscribe right now, support us. And if you want to watch more content from PenVenture, I'm gonna leave you this video right here. You can click and enjoy. As always, I'm your host, Amy from PenVenture, and I look forward to seeing you next video.